What's up, everybody? Gabe Wright here, representing the Movement Tours Improvement, and welcome back to the Coach's Corner, where we showcase golf instructors giving tips, drills, and lessons. Today, I am very excited to be with Mr. John Kim with the John Kim Golf yeah. Academy. John, appreciate you having on the show. Thanks for coming by, Gabe. Appreciate thank it. You, thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. Um, tell us a little about yourself. How long you've been teaching for, and where are we at right now? Okay, so I've been teaching golf for a little bit over 10 years. Uh, we're at the Legend at Arrowhead Golf Club in Glendale, Arizona. Um, a lot of my experience was done overseas uh, in South Korea and a little bit in, uh, in Thailand and all that. Um, moved over here, moved back over here about a couple years ago, like three years ago. So set up shop over here and uh, loving every moment of it right now. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, thank you for yeah. reaching out to me yeah. and setting this up. Who do we got? Who are we teaching today? So we're teaching on Ishan. Uh, he goes to the local high school, Mountain Ridge High School. Um, he played his first year on the golf team. He's uh, he's 15 years old right now. Um, still getting over some some bad habits, but uh, he's starting to play a little bit more. He's looking to get more into tournament golf uh, this year. So he really doesn't have too much experience with that. So um, he does have a tendency to to slide and, and hook it quite a bit. So we'll kind of help him get rid of those, some of those things today, and uh, yeah, take oh. it from there. Perfect. Well, let's uh, yeah. we'll jump in on your lesson. Okay, sounds good. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, remember that drill we did uh, last session? As far yeah. as like ba basically right feeling here? like right here. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I want you to feel like you exit to the left a little bit sooner. Okay. Okay. So stop halfway down. Okay. There you go. So go to that three swing again. Good. Go through. So again, instead of going out here like this, yeah. I want you to feel like more rounded. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. There it is. Yeah. Feel it more with like the rotation of your body rather than trying to snap it with the arms. Right. Okay. Because if you're if you're rotated enough, like go back to that position for me. So if you're rotated enough, you should feel like the momentum actually goes back to the left. You feel that? Yeah. But then if you go more like this, where does it go? To the right. To the right, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Good. Do it again. To do a rehearsal swing for me. A little more rotation. Yep, good. So stop at that position there. Good. See how you're more square right yeah. now? So I don't want you to stop here, okay? I want you to be more level right here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Excellent. Good. And what are you doing this for, John? Just to kind of get him to, to train pre-impact a little bit more. Okay. Because his his uh, feel of pre-impact is, is has always been more this way. Okay. Because he's always heard somewhere that swinging to the right is actually a good thing. Yeah. But then when, when people say swing right, the club head, the path of the club head goes right, but you don't physically want to shove your hands to the right. Gotcha. Okay. So I actually want him to feel like everything's going more left but the club head itself is actually tracking down that target line mm. or slightly to the right. Yeah. Tell me if this makes sense. I feel like yeah. as you're getting him more shallow on the downswing, yeah. it forces to have to rotate more through the ball. Exactly, yeah. Because by the time he gets to, to pre, I know that there's more, uh, instruct the, the lingo these days are certain positions, yeah. but I kind of like to dumb it down a little bit for, for my mm -hmm. students because when I talk about like P4, 5, 6, yeah. 7, they're like, what is that? Yeah. So, um, but as instructor, it's good to know kind of, to kind of talk about the different positions. But I would like to say like pre-impact right here, I want his body, so bring it back to like right about here. I want his body to be a little bit more down this way and feel like it's more level. Because as soon as the left side goes up pre-impact, he can't swing left anymore. Gotcha. You see that? Yeah. So if he feels more level at this stage right here, now he has all this room to, to turn this way. Yeah, exactly. John, is there any instructors that you've really learned from over your years and where you've kind of maybe picked up some of your you know, philosophy from? We're talking about, uh, uh, when I started to, to look at YouTube a lot, uh, mm -hmm. Kelvin Guillahera mm -hmm. from, from Hawaii, he was one of my favorite guys. Um, 
Dana Dahlquist is another one of mine. Um, I actually went through his instructor certification. Okay. It totally blew my mind. Okay. Yeah, as far as how smart he is. So, Very um, cool. Just trying to apply different stuff I've heard from different people. I mean, of course, you're going to disagree with a lot of what other guys say, but sure. just kind of make it your own, maybe. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the beauty of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Good. And just try to feel like you're just a little bit more down this way. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Good. Nice. Another drill I like to have them do is uh, go and set up to a ball here. To go through. Okay. There's going to be one here. Okay. Okay. So go through. So just do like a half swing here. Go really slow. So what I want him to feel is actually for his hands to feel like it goes more this way. Under. Yeah. Because right. because his his tendency to go more here. Um, I don't like to have players hit with the actual stick here because. There's always uh, a fear of hitting the stick, yeah. right? So I like to have them do a lot of rehearsal swings this way. Um, <laughs> another good idea is not to put the stick too close to you, right? Okay. So I, I want you to feel like you just kind of exit more to the left. Okay, yeah, there you go. So it's more, let's go more this way. Okay. So you're basically just trying to match it more like that, okay? So it's here and more rounded this way. Okay. okay, so it's gonna come in, square, and around, okay? Do a couple practice things without a ball. There it is, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. Go a little slower here. Can we break it down? Or yeah, going? yeah, that's fine. Mm hmm Good. Yep, good. So set up to a ball here. And just go at that speed for me. So you could actually put the ball just a little bit more to the inside right there. There you go. You just feel like you're doing like a 30-yard pitch shot here. Good. Mm -hmm. My preference is for the players not to hit with the stick there. Mm -hmm. It's just more of a field drill. Just yeah, yeah. Gonna try to get more of that. You're not making it so should be absolutely perfect. It's just there as a guideline, just to just exactly, to, you exactly. Know, yep. Put the emphasis yeah. on going left. I mean, if you hit balls, it can be a little dangerous mm -hmm. if you if you hit it right, yeah. right in front of the stick. Yeah. So just do it as a field drill here. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So stop and hold your finish. Hold the finish. Yeah, so ideally, like, when you do it as a field drill, yeah. I kind of want to see the, the shaft planes to be somewhat parallel to one another like that. Okay. Like, I don't want to see it go, like, like this. Gotcha. Right? It's going to be here, and it's going to be more this way. Right. Yeah, yeah. That gives him kind of a checkpoint to see if he's practicing by himself, maybe holding his finish, seeing how it lines up with that shaft in the ground. Exactly. Feedback on. Mm-hmm. Good. Yep. Is your club face going to be like a certain angle? Yeah, I want it to be more square. So your tendency, is so when you come through, is you have a tendency to, to have the face like shut down like that. Yeah. Right? Ideally, I want to see it a little more square like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. A little bit more vertical to maybe just slightly close. Exactly, yeah, 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 yeah. Vertical. Yeah. So you're not really depending on so much about about that type of action right there. Yeah. So as you rotate it, the, the wrist angle looks a little bit more this way. Okay. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Yep. 
Mm -hmm. Do one more. Good. So this time, instead of setting up right here, let's back up a little bit and get that feel down. Put a ball in front of you. Yep, good. Yeah, during the a lot of times I'll work more on more on setup and getting to the first few positions before I even talk about transition because mm. it's almost impossible to tie everything together in one lesson. Yeah, right? yeah. Having a, having a good load in the back end just helps. It, it makes the transition a lot easier. Just building more of yeah. a foundation of the proper sequencing. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah, it's like trying to go to level yeah. five before we've gone to level one and two. Yeah, Creative yeah. Stance, posture, alignment, mm -hmm. takeaway. Better, good. When I had my junior academy in, in Korea, I wouldn't even give the, the kids a, a ball for like the first couple months. Because mm. I'm big into, into training body motion first mm. and then kind of introduce the club to them. And then after that, um, basically when I put a ball down, the ball's just in the way of your motion, right? But I can't get away with that over here. Yeah. <laughs> you want to hit balls, you know? Yeah. That's actually really funny. I'd like to know more about that, like, yeah. the, maybe the discipline or the, the humbleness to be like, whatever you tell me to do, coach, like, no ball or no ball, you know, I'll do it. I feel like there's more, um, I don't want to say there's students disrespectful over here, but uh, just the culture. Yeah. Um, the teacher is, you're basically, you're up here, mm -hmm. right? You, you, there's more respect towards the teacher. We're here, it's, uh, I feel like it, we're kind of more on level, which, yeah. which is, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's just. There's more emptiness maybe over there, like. Yeah. You're the authority, I listen, I'm gonna follow. Exactly. This is maybe what I want to do, or how I want to do it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know? <clears throat> I think that's important, really. Yeah. Even in the education system over there, I mean, it, whatever the teacher says, you do. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, good. And for somebody like Ishan, mm -hmm. John, like how, preferably, how many, how often would you like to see him practice during the week? At least three times a week. Okay. And that you're talking like a medium, a large? It doesn't even have to be uh, how many balls. Um, like if he, like after school, how, how much time do you have after school these days? Uh, not like too much. But yeah. Not, like I say if he wants to get become a better player, I would suggest spending more time on short game and putting, mm -hmm. because I mean he could he could bunt he, he could hit it out there. Yeah. I mean he doesn't miss too many greens, but when it comes to like short game and putting, that's gotcha. when you really see the scores drop. Okay. But when you're working on like specific technique like this, I, I want to see him out here at least three days a week. Yeah. yeah. It's hard to do with with his school schedule because he does so many different things. But gotcha. so you so what you're doing right now is you're more. You're more here sliding, a lot of face rotation, right? Where I actually want you to feel like you're more, you're more back here like that. <clears throat> so see the difference in the ball flight. So pre-impact, I'm more, I feel like I have more weight back here, right? Yours is more like, like that right there, yeah. That makes sense? John, what type of scores do you shoot when you play? The two times I play? Uh, probably like 72. Okay. Yeah. What's the best you've gotten your game to? 62 is my best score. Wow. Yeah. How, uh, how important do you think, or how do you think that has helped you being a coach, being able to get your game down where you could shoot you know, even far or better? The funny story in Korea, like if you can't do it yourself, you're not gonna be really busy over there. Mm. Okay, so um, when I was in Korea, I didn't play a lot. So then a lot of, a lot of students would say, why should I listen to you if you can't do it yourself? Yeah. So then I, I really grinded over there. So mm. that's, I kind of figured out my own game over there. Mm -hmm. um, just over here, I mean, the pros are, are in higher regards over there. Mm -hmm. Like um, over here, it's I feel like it's more about the operations, yeah. Uh, whatever brings in the revenue. So it's as pros, it's hard to 
get your game good like at a daily uh, municipal. Gotcha, yeah. Where you have more playing opportunity like if you're at a private club. Okay. Yeah. But I feel, I feel like as, as a teaching pros, it's very important for us to keep our game up. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like it's very important for us to be able to demonstrate what mm -hmm. we're preaching. Yeah, really embodying, really being it. Yeah. You know, yeah. not just yeah. knowing it. Yeah, exactly. For, and actually, like, yeah. actualizing it's a whole different story. Yeah. Yeah, again, the biggest difference I want you to feel, like, go and take your setup, is so when you're out here hitting balls, I want you to feel the difference. Like, what happens to the ball flight when you go something like this? Yeah. And then when you hit a ball more like this. Okay. Okay. So, like, try to over exaggerate that move there and then this move here. You see how, how I have you more back this way mm -hmm. instead of like, like that, that yeah. okay? So for, the, for a few shots here, intensely try to do this and see what happens. So what type of ball flight was that? that was like a push. More a push, yeah. yeah. A little chunky. So you see that flight, that's, that's like a normal shot for you, right? Yeah. So what'd you do there with your body? That time I did that flight. You did more of that, right? Yeah. Now try to do the total opposite where you feel, Rotation. where you feel like this, where I have more weight back on your trail leg this way. Okay. You see how you're more back mm -hmm. rather than that there? Now, I don't care what the ball does here, just try to over exaggerate the opposite. I like that, John, of like yeah. exaggerating the yeah. bad too. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't really think to have done that. Like exaggerate what you do really bad to kind of like really feel yeah. and then be able to like, you know, try to go the opposite way so you can have some distinction between the two. Sure, yeah. Uh, that kind of stemmed from, so I was trying to demonstrate to like my higher handicap players like what creates a top shot. Mm. <clears throat> oh, that was better. So I had to figure out like how to hit a top shot by coming too steep or too shallow. Yeah. So then I was like, okay, let's, let's try a few more things. So that's. I practice those type of movements out here quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> you see instructors like topping shots yeah, and shanking yeah, them. You're like, yeah. how do these guys do that? Yeah. <laughs> Closer. Now try to try to do that move, but try to hold the face off. Okay. So feel like you're swinging like towards the left corner of the range there. Yeah. But I also want you to feel like your club face is pointed to the right. Okay. okay? Don't preset anything. Just try to feel that through impact. Yeah. Exactly. That was different. A little straighter, right? Yeah. yeah. Straighter. Way different uh, finish at the end, too. Yeah, yeah. So again, feel-wise, left corner of the range, right, for your path, but feel like the face is towards the first hole. That's nice. And things like you're not even close to swinging that far left, yeah. that's just the feel for you. All right. Yeah. I feel like if you never played golf before, like that information would be so confusing. You're like swing left, yeah. face right. Exactly. <laughs> to make it go straight, you're like, what? <laughs> and then it turns out perfect. You're like, huh. Ooh, better. Yeah. Yeah, so for my like longer term term students, like three day or five day golf schools, I like to kind of break everything down. So as far as understanding a little bit of body mechanics, mm -hmm. like biomechanics, and then understanding general ball flight. So you're not like totally confused when I tell you to swing left. Mm. Like for for a player, like beginning player that that pulls it, right? Yeah. Or or slices or yeah. pulls it, right? Knowing what causes those type of shots mm -hmm. is very important in my opinion. So when I say like feel the feel the total opposite, you kind of know what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. So really try to over exaggerate it here. Like swing way to the left. Yeah. Good. Now when you do this motion, I mean, you still feel like it's a rotational motion. It's not a straight, over the top action, right? Yeah. Yep. Not bad. That's the type of stuff I did as a junior too. Just trying to figure out how to hit, kind of like what Bubba Watson does. Mm. 
just like, oh, that was good. How important is that, do you think, to have that feel of being able to, you know, curve the ball both ways and kind of knowing the feels and mechanics that go along with that? Oh, it's very important. That, that kind of trains your artistic form as a golfer. Like, I feel like everything's, I mean, even though the, the mechanics of the swing are very important to kind of understand and do, um, I feel like that's kind of a lost art sometimes. Because uh, in my junior program for my tournament players, what I'll do is actually, even though they hit a good drive, I'll intentionally put them in certain situations where they're forced to hit like a low cut or, okay. or a rope and hook around a tree. So they're not like totally lost when, when they're in that type of situation in a tournament. I feel like that probably helps some their body awareness for making swing changes normally too. Oh, oh definitely. Just have more mm -hmm. kinesthetic awareness of where the club's at and what it, what exactly. it makes to go. Exactly, know. yep. That's nice. See, at least now that's more of a control draw, right? Okay. Rather than a than a hook. Yeah, rather than a pull hook. Yep. Nice. Looking good. You have any questions on anything? No, I don't think so. Pretty good. Yeah. So if you're ever like kind of on the range again and you keep hitting those hooks, I mean, go to this little drill. Yeah. Nice. Yep. Just remember, a lot of those miss shots that you hit, yeah. think of those as an effect of what you did previously in the swing somewhere, okay. right? So if your first move from the top is bad, like let's say you do that, yeah. it's very hard to recover from that position, yeah. right? Nice. Nice shot. So much more fluid, too. Yeah. yeah. He has a very smooth swing. He does, yeah. He's yeah. got a very yeah. smooth swing. Yeah. All right, guys, so this is one of my favorite drills as far as, you don't actually need a bolt when you do this. Um, just kind of getting for, for you guys that, that tend to push and hook uh, a lot of your shots. Um, you set up the sticks as far as, so you basically want to try to get the shaft plane that you normally set up on, and these two sticks on the same plane, or at least parallel to one another. How far away are these sticks, roughly? Um, as far, you want to, so try to get the ball and this stick about roughly two to three feet away. Okay. Um, you don't want to be too close because then your hands might hit the stick, okay? You want to be far enough where visually you can see as you come through, you want to be somewhat parallel. Um, to that stick on the through swing, right? So for, for you guys that tend to push and hook everything, most likely your hand path's gonna go above the stick and your club is gonna go way out to the right, okay? So in order to create more of that better rotation, I want you to feel like the hands go to the left, but the club head is still tracking down that target line as best as you can. Um, this, this drill wouldn't be too good for, for those of you guys that slice it too much because yeah, you're gonna be able to avoid that stick all day long, but you're probably gonna come over this stick right here, okay? So once you go to this position right here, just feel like the hands go left of the stick, but the club is still tracking down that target line this way. More like that. All right, thanks for watching, you guys. Um, be sure to subscribe to my Instagram, and uh, see you next time. Okay, John, thank you for letting us drop in on yeah. a lesson today. Um, things that I saw which yeah. I really liked was you really focused on positions mm -hmm. and being very hands-on yeah. and I actually feel you say very little which I think is nice and you give the player space to actually hit balls and get comfortable with those positions you're putting them in kind of giving those checkpoints yeah I have uh, I mean, over the past few I, I've shadowed quite a bit of, uh, of top instructors and and the ones that I really like are the ones that don't say a lot mm. Um, I don't, I like to kind of have a player figure out for themselves. Uh, if, if they're on the wrong path, of course, I'll, I'll kind of get them to the right path, but I don't like to say, like, mm. after every shot, oh, it's okay, or, or things like that, you know, it's just get, getting that self-awareness of where I want them. Um, I mean, because when I first started, I used to say, I used to say way too much. Yeah. I was talking more than <laughs> the yeah. student was asking questions, so I've tried really hard over the past couple of years to kind of shut my mouth a little more. I recognize that. Yeah. And, it, yeah. and it's really nice having that silence to actually, like, allow the player to work on those things. Yeah, exactly. And something I noticed you did too, which was 
um, ask questions, mm -hmm. you know? And one thing I really like that I think is really clever, which is exaggerating, you know, really what they did bad, yeah. and exaggerating the, the opposite of what we're trying to do. Sure, yeah. And just building that kind of big gap so you really know the difference. Definitely, yeah. So, thank yeah, you, John. Yeah. I appreciate you. Legend at Arrowhead over here in Glendale, yeah. Arizona. Yeah. Do you have handles or a website people can go to to stay updated? Yeah, I have a, a Facebook and Instagram, uh, just John Kim Golf Academy. Well, thanks for coming by today, Gabe. Thank really you, John. appreciate it. Yeah. I appreciate you. Keep up the good you. work. Appreciate it. Thank you.